This is Adele Gasly. I'm going to present to you part four of the chapter about transformers. This part covers the following topics, polarity and multi-secondary windings. Another important feature or characteristic of the transformer is the polarity of its windings. The polarity of transformer windings designates the relative instantaneous current directions of winding leads. The polarity of windings is usually designated or marked with either dots or plus minus signs, as shown in this figure. These markings may be found on transformer cases beside terminals, winding leads, nameplates, or schematic and winding diagrams. Leads of primary and secondary windings are said to be on the same polarity when the instantaneous current entering the primary winding lead results in instantaneous current leaving the secondary winding leads, as though the two leads were a continuous circuit. In the case of two windings wound around the same core in parallel, for example, the polarity will be the same on the same ends. A sudden instantaneous current in the first coil will induce a voltage opposing the sudden increase in the first and also in the second coil because the inductive magnetic field produced by the current in the first coil traverses the two coils in the same manner. The second coil will therefore show an induced current opposite in direction to the inducing current in the first coil. Both leads behave like a continuous circuit, one current entering into the first lead and another current leaving the second lead. So currents entering identical terminals produce fluxes in the same direction. Thus, the EMF E12 on the primary and EMF E34 on the secondary are in phase. Since this is a practical concern, transformer manufacturers have come up with a sort of polarity marking standards to denote phase relationships. It is called the dot convention and is nothing more than a dot placed next to each corresponding leg of the transformer winding. So the similar placement of these dots next to the top ends of the primary and secondary windings tells us that whatever instantaneous voltage polarity seen across the primary winding will be the same as that across the secondary windings. In other words, the phase shift from primary to secondary will be zero degrees. On the other hand, if the dots on each winding of the transformer do not match up, the phase shift will be 180 degrees between the primary and secondary induced EMFs. This is denoted as out-of-phase voltage case. Polarity can be determined by experiments as shown in this figure. We connect three voltmeters as shown here. One is measuring the input voltage between terminals 1 and 2, the second one between terminals 1 and 3, and the third one between terminals 3 and 4. Terminals 2 and 4 are electrically connected with a conducting wire. Then if V13 is nearly equal V12 plus V34, then we can say that 1 and 4 are having identical polarity. But if V13 is equal V12 minus V34, then 1 and 3 are having identical polarity. According to the connection and polarity of the transformer given in this example shown on this slide, the voltmeter V12 will show the summation of primary and secondary voltages V12 and V34. This is called an additive condition. This slide shows voltmeter connections 
in subtractive and additive polarity conditions. Notice how in the upper circuit, the voltage vectors V12 and V34 add to each other, while in the bottom circuit, they subtract from each other. So the polarity of the transformer is important for applications where the phase shift between the input and output voltages is important to know. Transformers which have more than one winding on their primary or secondary are known commonly as multi-winding transformers. The principle of operation of multi-winding transformer is no different from that of an ordinary transformer. Primary and secondary voltages, current and turns ratios are all calculated the same. The difference this time is that we need to pay special attention to the voltage polarities of each coil winding, the dot convention making the positive or negative polarity of the winding when we connect them together. Multiple winding transformers, also known as multi-coil or multi-winding transformer, contain more than one primary or more than one secondary coil on a, a common laminated core. They can be either single-phase transformers or three-phase transformers, so they are multi-winding and multi-phase transformers, and their operation is the same. We will see an example of multi-secondary windings transformer and describe its operation. So let us consider the following case. Here we have one primary winding with N1 turns connected to the source and two secondary windings, one with N2 turns and the second one with N3 turns. Each secondary winding is connected to a separate load and will have different current depending on its EMF and impedance of the load connected to it. According to the previous two windings analysis, we know that E1 over E2 is actually equal to N1 over N2 and E1 over E3 is equal to N1 over N3. Now, in order to analyze the current in each winding, we can apply the current superposition theorem, which means that we can write that the current in the primary winding I1 is the sum of the current I12 producing current I2 in the secondary winding 2 plus the current I13 producing the current I3 in the secondary winding 3. So based on the current superposition, we can analyze each set of windings separately. Let's first consider that the secondary winding 2 is used alone. In this case, the primary current I12 will relate to the secondary current I2 with the turns ratio N2 over N1. So we are just applying the same rules we have seen previously when you study the two winding system. Now, if you consider the secondary winding 3 alone, so we can write that the primary current I13 equals the secondary current I3 multiplied by the turns ratio N3 over N1. Now superimposing the two currents when the two secondary winding are used together and considering the previous equation of the current I1 which is equal to the sum of I12 and I13 and the equations relating the primary current's components I12 and I23 to the secondary current currents I2 and I3, we can obtain the following equation. We can rearrange this equation by taking N1 from the denominator of the right-hand side of this equation and move it to the left-hand side and multiply it to I1. Notice that the primary MMF is now equal to the sum of the two secondary MMFs. 
This is expected, and we have seen that in the previous chapter related to magnetic circuits. Now, considering the power conservation rule, we can say that the input power S1 is transferred to the secondary side and is split between the two windings and generates two output powers, S2 and S3, with S1 equals S2 plus S3. which leads to writing this equation E1 I1 conjugate is equal to E2 I2 conjugate plus E3 I3 conjugate. Now the multi-winding transformers are usually used to transform the source voltage into several different voltage at the secondary side. However, these voltages are available only in steps and we cannot have a wide range of their variation. This is the end of this part. Thank you for watching.